Now sometimes when you do prolonged fasting and you break the fast by eating, you may experience certain digestive problems. So I want to address that. You could experience diarrhea, loose stools, gas, abdominal pain, bloating, or nausea. Now the reason for all this is because your digestive system has kind of gone to sleep and it hasn't woke up yet. And I'm talking about the fluids. It could be hydrochloric acid from the stomach. It could be enzymes from the pancreas. It could be bile. Or it could even be your good bacteria or flora in certain parts of your digestive tract. You definitely don't want to eat a huge meal and overload the system. So you want to start small. So if you're going for, let's say, I don't know, 48, 72 hours or longer, the best thing to do would be to start with some cooked vegetables with some broth, okay? Wait two hours and then consume some protein that's easier to digest, and that could be some fish, chicken, or even an egg, but make sure it's like three ounces, not a lot. You can also do like a little bit of avocado, okay? So Because you just want to ease into this so you don't overload the system. It wouldn't hurt to also take some apple cider vinegar or betaine hydrochloride, to build up your stomach acid because the symptoms of low stomach acid would be gas, abdominal bloating, and undigested food lower in the digestive tract. You can also take some purified bile salts to help you break down certain fats as well. And the symptoms of low bile salts would be like you're nauseated or you have bloating, okay? Or you might need some enzymes and that could be also bloating or pain more on the left side of your um, lower rib cage instead of the right. The right would be gallbladder, the left would be more the pancreas. You're just not able to kick in the pancreas to release these enzymes. So taking enzymes would take the stress off the pancreas. Now there's also enzymes in the small intestine that could be asleep too that need to be woken up. Uh, a probiotic wouldn't hurt as well, uh, especially if you have diarrhea or loose stools. So the whole point is to ease into this slowly so you don't overwhelm the system. You probably want to avoid things like nuts, nut butters, right off the bat, red meat, um, raw cruciferous vegetables, dairy like cheese, because all of these need certain enzymes, purified bile salts, more acid to break these things down. And if you're missing them, that can be the real problem. Now, there's also another condition that's very rare. It's called refeeding syndrome. Now, this would occur if you went for, let's say, a week or two weeks of fasting, and you're already nutritionally deficient in certain electrolytes um, like potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, and then you eat a refined carbohydrate or high sugar food. Because what's gonna happen, you're gonna spike insulin. And that insulin is gonna take all these electrolytes from your blood and push them right deep into the cell. That's what insulin does. And so you're gonna end up with all sorts of electrolyte deficiencies in your blood, which could make you feel weak, confused, and can create a big strain on your heart about three hours later. Now, you can avoid this by not having a high carb meal. You can also avoid this by taking certain electrolytes and nutrients throughout your fast, okay? Because it all depends on how much reserve you have, because nowadays there's not a lot of people that have a huge nutrient reserve in their body. And if they're new to fasting and they fast for a long period of time and then they don't have the, the necessary nutrients and then they do a high carb diet, big mistake. So anyway, I wanted to create this video to give you a little more background on why you may have digestive problems when you break the fast. And I'm not talking about breaking the fast doing intermittent fasting. I'm talking about more of a prolonged fast, like 72 hours or, or longer. All right. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.